there and thank you for joining me. I am the Leg Lady and really excited about this series where we are basically going to join one of my patients on her journey of getting her prosthesis uh, start to finish. In this first video, we are going to be focusing on her initial evaluation. So that's going to include me asking her questions, her asking me questions, range of motion, manual muscle testing, taking a look, examining her residual limb, and mainly just starting to build a rapport with the patient along with assessing what is an overall picture of her health, her living situation, and her goals when it comes to using a prosthesis. And I just wanna say I am very uh, grateful and very blessed to have so many wonderful patients that I work with and just wanted to give her a quick shout out and just a very big thank you for being willing to do this project with me. We are here and we are going to be doing just a quick eval and casting for a left transfemoral prosthesis. So about how far out are you from amputation surgery? Do you remember the date of the or rough estimate? They amputated it in May. I can't remember that date. Yeah, no worries. I was uh, septic because mm -hmm. of the infection and a week went by without me remember anything. I don't remember it. So yeah, <laughs> no worries. And I'm trying to remember uh, history of diabetes. Yeah. Okay. And any, with the diabetes, any history of wounds on your feet, ulcers, anything like that? Um, it was my leg okay. that was injured. Yeah. And they, could, they tried to take him, do a bypass, but it didn't okay. work. Okay. And any history of high blood pressure, joint pain, back pain, anything like that? Uh, I have a pinched nerve in my back. Okay. And is that causing pain? Sometimes it's not good. Is that lower back? Uh, my upper back. Oh, okay, gotcha. It bothers me a little bit when I sew. Okay. That's my hand mistake being over. Right, yes. And then I know we've already talked about obviously want to get back up walking but mm -hmm. what what were some of the things you know hobby wise or anything like that i want to draw or get a driving i want to be able to can i get on the ladder uh, <laughs> just one step <laughs> we'll have to see about that one because <laughs> i need to dust my a top get of the, my bookcases oh, okay gotcha uh, yeah <laughs> they're it's irritating yes <laughs> I have a long swiffer, but the pictures have to be moved. Okay, right. Yes. And so driving, I know you said church. Were you doing caring for yourself before yeah, and doing I everything do on my your spring own? Spring cleaning, okay. I ain't got to do. Yep, and we're getting into summer, so. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even here during spring. That's my and favorite time of the year. Yeah. I yeah, missed cause, it. Yeah, because how, how long were you away from home? Three months. Yeah, yeah I miss spring at Men Cry. Yeah, I bet it feels good to be back home though. It and, does. Yeah. At least I'll be here for fall. I right. Like fall the spring. other three, yep. Just get through summer and, yeah. And do you live here by yourself or do you have help, family? I have my daughter and her two okay. children. And it looks like I know you got a step. I'm trying to remember, do you got a step or a ramp? I've got a ramp now. The church built it for me. Oh, awesome. Yeah. You got a nice ramp too. Yeah, right? I need to learn how to go up and downstairs. Yeah. Too. But they'll help me with physical therapy, won't they? Right. And, and we'll help, help with it too. Yep. Yeah. Because I know you said you do have a step into the. Is it a step up or step down into the I've got a ramp, ramp for you too. Okay. Yeah. Like if I go somewhere, to my right. kids, other houses. Right. They have steps. Okay. My, I hate not to be able to get in the house. Getting, yeah. I have plenty of steps to practice with her. Yeah. And so that's definitely something that we'll help with and therapy will help with as well. They say it's not like being able to push off of your foot to walk. Yeah, so when you're looking at above knee amputation, it's it's basically relearning how to walk. You so walk, it, you, your knee goes, but you have to strike the foot. So, so it's um, and we'll be able, you'll get more of a feel of it when we do the check socket fitting. Mm -hmm. But it's basically just because you know typically you use the muscles in front to keep this knee straight. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be using the muscles in the back, your hamstrings, mm -hmm. and so it's. It's definitely awkward for the initial time, and it does take a lot of work, and it does take more energy to walk with the prosthesis. Your best 
<laughs> but you got the motivation. Yeah, and that's the main factor, mm -hmm. you know. Um, With my leg being amputated this far back. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Will the knee come out normal? Or? Yeah, so we, um, we set it up. Typically, we can just put the knee right at the bottom of the socket, and that puts it right where your other knee is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if that needs to be adjusted at all, we can. They that. asked me whether I wanted it below the knee or above the knee, and I said, I don't know which one's the best. I don't know right. how far infected it is. So. Yes. And that and that's the hard thing is um, if you can keep the knee, it it's easier to mm -hmm. use the prosthesis. Because once you go above the knee, that's another joint that you're missing. Mm -hmm. and, um, so, it, it does take more energy to walk and more training to learn how to walk with an above knee versus a below knee prosthesis. But yeah, like you said, because we've had patients too that have had the amputation, you know, below the knee, a transtibial amputation, and they didn't have the blood flow to support healing. You mm -hmm. know, so they were months and months and months of not healing, not healing, not healing, and then they ended up having to go back for another surgery above the yeah. knee. So. So I guess it's good to say they're not that way because they uh -huh. don't have good, good blood flow down there. I yeah, yeah, and especially with how um, up here has been healing, it's, mm -hmm. that was probably what needed um, yeah. to be done. It's but, been doing good. Thank God for it. Yeah. Too. This is probably about the third time I have seen her. I originally was introduced to her in a skilled nursing facility. In this first photo is a few weeks after surgery. She still has her sutures in. There's a small opening up at the top of her limb where her limb meets her waist. And then there's also an opening medial distal along the suture site. And she does have a history of diabetes and slow healing. Second video is a couple weeks later. There is some firmness around the suture site. So you'll see me massaging. I am educating her on massaging her residual limb as she heals. And that's for two reasons. First of all, to keep that tissue mobile. And second, to what we call desensitize the limb. The wound up near the top of her leg has been healing well. That other area, medial distal, is, she said about they have it packed right now and she said it's about half inch deep and she is as of right now going back once a week for wound care and this photo is another two weeks later on the posterior suture there's just one little scabbed area and then when looking at that medial posterior or the medial distal opening it's not as deep as it was so it's going in the right direction. It's just a little slower than she would like. The main thing that we're concerned about here is we just want to make sure that that gets healed from the inside out and that there's no infection present. So we are going to go ahead and cast. When we see her for the check socket, it will be another week and a half or so. So that will give it a little bit more time to heal and then we can reassess how the healing has been progressing and how slowly we'll be taking it initially with the prosthesis. A lot of times though, and this isn't in every case, but oftentimes we'll see monitored, you know, progressive prosthetic use can help with wound healing. So we'll take a look at this foot and you said no wound wounds on this foot. Well, I got a toenail. Okay. So I feel a lot of Oh, no. Okay. Is that healing all right? Okay. Should be. I put okay. some meta honey on it. Gotcha. I need to go to the doctor to get that toenail cut. Yeah, do you have someone oh. that takes care of the nail oh, care for you? Like I think I have to get uh, the doctor. Yeah, it's usually a, to, uh, for diabetics, usually yeah. a podiatrist. Um, do you have someone that you go to? Yeah, I went to okay. them a long time ago. Okay. But I think I need to get the doctor to do that. Yeah, just to keep an eye on this. And can you go ahead and move your foot up and down like you're working a gas pedal? Yep, there you go. All right, and point your toes down and keep them down for me. Yeah, you lock in. And toes up and keep them pointed up for me. Good. And straighten this knee out. Oh, straighten it out. Straighten there it. we go. Keep it straight for me. Just make sure it's not locked up. There you go. And bend your knee for me. 
and keep it bent. Uh, I know you're going to freak. It's going to happen. I know. Is this area a little tender? No, not much. More numb than okay. anything. So knees together. Yep, legs together. together. Yep. And then apart. And then just bring your knee up to your chest a little bit for me. Okay. I'm going to try and push down, try and keep it up for me. I'm trying. <laughs> I know that was hard. Push down. <laughs> and then push down your leg for me into my hands. Keep it pushed down. Good. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So just lift this leg up a little bit. It's stronger than that right? one. Right, I think this one is. <laughs> and then go ahead and push down for me. Push down as hard as you can. Good. There we go, good, and relax. And so I know we had talked about it before, but since I know you're not having therapy right now until we get the leg, um, that's one of those exercises that you can do again while, while you're sitting in the chair, lying down in bed. I'm in the bed, I can go okay. back, uh, I stand up sometimes. Okay. If somebody's here with me, right. then I walk over and try to exercise. But... Do you um, take your limbs <coughs> and push them down into the bed yeah. while you're laying on your back and then hold them for oh, about 10 seconds, mm -hmm. relaxing and doing that both. Okay. Kind of okay. And is that pretty easy or yeah. does that, okay, so see if you can hold for 10. Uh, okay. and then relax. So that is the first segment of this transfemoral series and next week will be the casting and preparing the cast uh, for scan.